Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you're dealing with a health challenge or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge you want help with, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, the longevity products, the longevity business, our skin health products, our truth skin health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or you can sign up right off our website's brightsideben.com. Or you can purchase products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. All the longevity products are up. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Start Pack, Glucogel Caps, Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium, Ultimate Niacin. All the longevity products are at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, start yourself a longevity business, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. We can help you build your business. If you like the idea of working out of your home, making your own hours, Call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, all for a one-time $25 fee. You can also check out our Truth Skin Health products. Truthtreatments.com is our website. We've got a skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com, as well as our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Transdermal C Balm, all made with generous, copious amounts of vitamin C. Our Truth Transdermal C Serum is made with almost 70% vitamin C, never any preservative fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. We are talking about heart disease, the leading cause of death, the leading cause of misery in this country and around the world. If you've never had an issue with your heart, consider yourself lucky. Angina, heart attacks, TIAs. It's hard to imagine the kind of terror and sheer pain that something like a heart attack can cause. Technically speaking, a heart attack, or doctors call it myocardial infarctions, MIAs, um, uh, MIs. Uh, heart attack is basically the death of a part of your heart, a part of the heart muscle that follows a loss of blood supply. The supply is typically cut off when a, an artery that supplies blood to the heart muscle is blocked by a clot. If some of the heart muscle dies, a person experiences m unbelievable pain, chest pain, and electrical instability of the heart muscle tissue. On our last program, we were talking about the relationship between the emotions and the health of the physical organ of the heart. 
a physical organ called the heart. We said that our emotions form a type of body that is a correlate to the physical body. And the heart is a bridge between these two aspects of our being. The heart is a bridge between our physical nature and our emotional nature. You could say that the heart is a bridge between the emotional body and the physical body. By focusing on the heart itself, by focusing and paying attention to the physical organ called the heart that's located in, the, in our chest, we can access our emotional body. We can literally breathe into our heart by focusing on our chests and the organ itself, the heart, will respond. We can actually breathe into our heart and improve our heart health. We can, as we're doing our breathing techniques, which we talk about on this program all the time, you can focus it on your heart and you can actually improve blood supply to your heart. You can actually open up blood vessels in your heart simply by focusing on the heart and doing your breathing techniques. Try it. Close your eyes, place your attention on your heart as you breathe in a rhythmic and steady fashion and notice that you're becoming calmer. Think about someone or something that you love as you do this, and you'll notice that there's this warm and peaceful sensation right in the center of your chest. What you're feeling is your emotional heart. Simply by breathing and noticing and paying attention to this area in the center of your chest where your heart is located, not exactly in the center of your chest, but around that area, you'll actually notice that you're feeling calmer. If you activate love, if you think of something you love or someone you love at the same time, you'll notice this warm sensation. This is your emotional body that you're activating. In my opinion, in terms of our physical well-being, we focus way too much on the physical aspects of health and nowhere near enough on our emotions when it comes to how healthy or unhealthy we are. And there's probably no other organ in the body that's more responsive to feelings and emotions than the heart. In addition to being a function of the heart, emotions are also a function of the brain. We have an emotional center in our brain. It's called the limbic system, also known as the emotional motor system, and it's responsible for how we experience, how we express our emotions. It's located in the core of the brain. It includes a, a really interesting area called the amygdala, which is unbelievably important. There's a really cool book that a guy named Neil Slade wrote, S-L-A-D-E. He's from Denver. He wrote a book called Tickle Your Amygdala. Really, really interesting book. And he, In the book, he talks about how you can actually mentally think, just, just place your attention on the amygdala, which are these two little centers on the side of your brain around where your temples are, these two little pieces of tissue right where your temples are. And he does this thing, or he says you can do this thing called tickling your amygdala, which is actually thinking of a, like, you imagine a feather tickling the sides of your temple or inside where your brain is, and the, by the sides of your temple, and you'll actually feel calmer. And it really works. It's called Tickle Your Amygdala, Neil Slade. I'm trying to get him on the program for him to talk about it, but you can get the book off of Amazon. Other areas in the limbic system are the hippocampus, which is your memory center. There's a very important relationship between memory and emotions. If you want to remember something, link an emotion to the memory. It's, it's well known that if we have a, 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 a real intense emotion around an experience, you tend to remember it better. There's a very important connection between emotions and memory. So the heart is actually not only connected to the brain, the heart, is not only, uh, the heart not only communicates to the brain, the heart actually is a type of brain in the sense that there is an interface between the nervous system and the brain and the heart. There's actually, you actually have nerve cells, neurons in your heart. The communication between the heart and the brain is so interactive and these two structures are so enmeshed, you might actually even think of the heart and the brain as one system, the heart-brain system. And this study between the relationship of the heart and the brain is called neurocardiology, and it's, it's becoming more and more recognized as an important aspect of cardiac health. We talked about neurocardiology yesterday, heart math. They're really big on neurocardiology. The author and biologist Joseph Pierce said the idea that, quote, the idea that we can think with our hearts is no longer just a metaphor, but is in fact a real phenomenon. We now know this because of the combined research of two or three fields and proving that the heart is the major center of intelligence in human beings, unquote. This is what neurocardiology is all about. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or our Truth Skin Health products, if you have a success story you'd like to share or a health challenge your loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you're advertised or recommended on the program, you can head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and join me in my mission to help educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, so we're talking about the very important and very underappreciated relationship between the heart and the brain. It's changing, admittedly, with the organizations like HeartMath and uh, the Science of Neurocardiology. A really cool book if you're interested in exploring this idea is called The Heart-Mind Connection by uh, Dr. Windsor Ting, Dr. Gregory Friccione, F-R-I-C-C-H-I-O-N-E. It's called The Heart mind connect uh, the heart mind connection and it's about how emotions affect the heart how negative emotions can actually cause or make heart disease worse this is not airy fairy this is hardcore science folks we don't address it anywhere near enough and I may be guilty of that myself talking about the biochemistry and the nutritional aspects of heart disease and disease in general, but there's a very, very important and underappreciated relationship between how we think, how we feel, and how our bodies show up. This is especially true about the heart. And the relationship between the heart, uh, uh, the heart and the brain is highlighted by the fact that strokes, or CVAs as they're called, cerebrovascular accidents, love that term, cerebrovascular accidents, a stroke is where blood flow to the brain is cut off, Strokes can be caused by arrhythmias and congestive heart failure. Likewise, something called mini-strokes, or TIAs, transient ischemic attacks. TIAs are like warning strokes. TIAs can be pretty, pretty scary, too. TIAs are, are relatively minor, relatively benign, at least in terms of their immediate consequences, but they can be warnings of very bad things to come. There's still a type of stroke. TIA is still considered a type of stroke, although it is technically, they, they call it a warning stroke, because uh, it can indicate the likelihood of bad things on the way, including real strokes, which can ultimately lead to a fate worse than death. I had a really good friend who was this uh, large fella, definitely diabetic or pre-diabetic, didn't take care of himself, and uh, one day he had a stroke, and for the rest of his life, which wasn't you know, only another 20 years or so, he, he, had to, he had this stroke when he was, I think, in his late 30s. And uh, for the next 20 years of his life until he died, he died in his late 50s, he was in a wheelchair. He was a, a quadriplegic. It was awful, absolutely awful. It's a, fate wor- a stroke can be a fate worse than death, in my opinion. You'd rather be dead than be a quadriplegic in a wheelchair. It was just terrible. TIAs are warning strokes, and they're caused like their more severe cousins, like a real stroke. They're caused by a lack of blood flow to the brain, and they should be taken very, very seriously. TIA symptoms include vision changes, trouble speaking. That's called dysphagia when you have a problem speaking, confusion, confusion, balance issues, tingling, dizziness, fainting, weird tastes of smell, weird weird senses of uh, uh, taste or smell numbness on one side of your body or one side of your face. And TIAs are unfortunately pretty common. According to the Stroke Association, a third of American adults have had symptoms consistent with TIAs. TIA symptoms usually last a couple of minutes, three to four minutes, sometimes less. When a TIA is over, that particular blockage doesn't cause permanent injury to the brain, but it causes permanent injury to the psyche because it's scary. And it should be scary. TIAs are short-term mini-strokes that give you a sense of what's on the way if we don't make some serious changes in our life. Blockages may be temporary, but uh, hopefully the changes that we make in response to TIAs are permanent. One of the most important causes of transient ischemic attacks of TIAs, or for that matter for strokes, is AFib, atrial fibrillation, which is another serious problem. And you don't need a blood thinner if you have AFib. That's what they tend to give you because they're afraid of blood clots, but what you really need to do is calm down. AFib is caused by spikes in cortisol, activation of the sympathetic nervous system, basically a body and a heart in distress. 
deep breathing strategies can be incredibly important for folks dealing with AFib. Hyperbaric oxygen can be important for AFib. And what does that tell you? It tells you in large part, atrial fibrillation, AFib is an oxygenation issue. Lack of oxygenation, in my opinion, lack of oxygenation is just as important as lack of nutrition. This is why we're always talking about slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Now it's true that a lack of oxygen can be caused by inflammation and that has to be addressed as well. The inflammatory response, as we've said endlessly on this program, is a defensive response and it is a key feature of all chronic degenerative diseases, including heart disease, including atrial fibrillation, and inflammation will block oxygen flow for sure. But slow, deep breathing, slow, deep rhythmic breathing is unspeakably valuable when it comes to all health challenges and especially when it comes to AFib or when it comes to heart health. So the heart and the brain and the emotions are all linked. The heart, the brain, the emotions, and the mental, our mental nature, how we think, they're all linked. The heart is, as we said yesterday, is a portal to our emotions. It's also a portal to our minds, and this is not airy-fairy. This is called neurocardiology. It's based in hard science. It's becoming more and more recognized as really, really important when it comes to taking care of our cardiovascular system. The heart is, has a direct link to the brain, and it signals directly to the emotional part of the brain, this emotional part of the brain called the limbic system. And because of these extensive connections between the heart and the brain, the heart can actually activate emotions even before the brain receives sensory information. The heart communicates to the, to the brain even before the eyes do, and even before the, our, our physical, our, our sense of, uh, of touch does or a sense of smell or taste, or any of our senses. The heart has an immediate connection to the brain via an electromagnetic field. The heart generates the most powerful and most extensive electromagnetic field in the body. There's electronic energy, an electromagnetic field that's coming out of the heart, and that electromagnetic field carries information to the brain. The heart's magnetic field is 500 times stronger than the brain's magnetic field. The heart's magnetic field can be detected several feet away from the body. And many scientists believe that this electromagnetic field that comes from the heart, that emanates out of the heart, is actually a carrier of information that tells the brain what's happening in the heart. This direct link between the brain and the heart is especially prominent when it comes to survival emotions, anxiety, anger, fear. And these feelings, these emotions, are the result of the heart's communication with a part of the brain, the, the part of the brain that we talked about earlier called the amygdala. And this is why anxiety will make your heart race, and when the heart races, we will feel anxious. And by the way, there's a difference between feelings and emotions. Feelings are physical sensations, and emotions are mental responses to those physical sensations. Emotions are how we interpret physical sensations in the body. Physical sensations associated with sadness or happiness, they can actually be detected in the body as a physical sense. Emotions are more about our brain. They're more about our interpretation of those physical sensations. And this is extremely important because while our feelings come and go, and we don't really have control over them, we do have control over how we interpret those feelings. And that's what emotional control is all about. A really cool book called Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman that talks all about this. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. 844-236-6010 if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today. Heart attacks, heart disease, cardiovascular health in general. 844-236-6010 is our number, and if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010. From... Frontiers in Physiology, the journal Frontiers in, Physio Frontiers in Physiology, lower more than you lift benefits for experienced resistance trainers. This is a great, great article. Two recently published studies show that greater benefits occur when lowering a greater load than is lifted. That's called a negative when you're lifting weights. And this is a 
unbelievably valuable way to leverage or to incre uh, exploit or take advantage of the power and of resistance training without having to spend a lot of time in the gym. Take advantage of the negative, that is the lowering phase of your workout. When you're lifting weights, say you're doing curls, you're pulled a, you do a curl, you lift the weight up. When you release the weight, instead of dropping your arm, just do it really, really slowly. That's called a negative. Weightlifters call that a negative, and that is really where you get most of your strength, or a lot of your strength. A lot of the benefits from weightlifting occur on the negative, on the way down. So go down really, really slowly. According to this article, quote, humans have a greater ability to produce force when lowering a load compared to lifting a load, so it seems logical to train with greater eccentric loads than those used during the concentric phase of lift, that is when you're lifting the weight. So if you go down really, really slow when you're dropping your arm, say if you're doing a curl or if you're doing a bench press, you'll maximize your workout and you won't have to spend any more time in the gym. Take advantage of the negative. Weightlifters all know this, but if you're lifting weights at home or if you're not necessarily a big time weightlifter, take advantage of the negative. From, this is from here, uh, where is this from? From Washington University School of Medicine, natural compound coupled with specific gut microbes may prevent severe flu. Very important article for folks who are wondering whether they should get the flu shot or the flu vaccine. It turns out the gut bacteria are very important for helping protect the body against the flu. Microbes that live in the gut don't, this is uh, from Washington State University, published in the journal Science. Microbes that live in the gut don't just digest food, they also have far-reaching effects on the immune system. Now, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, that doesn't come as a surprise to you, but it may come as a surprise to your pharmacist, to your, to your doctor, who thinks you need to get the flu shot. It turns out the gut bacteria, if taken care of a pro uh, properly, are just as important, if not more important, as anything you can get from your doctor to protect you from the flu. How do you help with your gut? How do you help support gut bacteria? Fiber, and something called flavonoids, which we haven't gotten a chance to talk about, but we certainly will be. Those are plant nutrients, uh, polyphenol plant nutrients. We spent a lot of time a couple of months ago talking about polyphenols, and we will continue talking about polyphenols. Flavonoids are very important polyphenols found in blueberries, red wine, black tea, strawberries. Pretty much all fruits and vegetables are going to have flavonoids. And it turns out that there's a special kind of bacteria that lives in the gut that can prevent flu infections by breaking down these flavonoids. You know, flavonoids aren't considered to be essential nutrients because supposedly there's no disease state that is associated with deficiencies in flavonoids. But more and more, we're seeing these things as being unbelievably important especially when it comes to uh, supporting the immune system. Now it turns out that gut bacteria can munch down, can digest these flavonoids and turn them into immune boosting substances. It's been well known that flavonoids are very important for the immune system, but nobody really knew exactly why. Now it turns out that this relationship between flavonoids and fruits and vegetables and gut bacteria is behind much of the immune protection that is well known to be associated with eating your fruits and vegetables. Make sure you're eating your colored fruits and veggies. Flavonoids especially are very, very important. All right, let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you. All right, one more and then we'll get to the phones. 844-236-6010. Mice fed tryptophan develop immune cells that foster a tolerant gut. Yesterday we talked about how tryptophan is important for diabetics. Now it turns out the tryptophan, the amino acid tryptophan is also important for gut bacteria. Once again, we see the very, very, very important relationship between bacteria that live in the gut and overall health, it turns out, especially around the immune system. It turns out that when you eat tryptophan, tryptophan-containing foods, or you use tryptophan as a supplement, you will develop immune cells that make your digestive system healthier and more tolerant to otherwise to foods that would otherwise cause digestive health issues. It may be that when you develop a healthy gut by using substances like tryptophan, you may not have as many digestive intolerances. You may not have as many food allergies. If such findings, this is a reading from the article here, this is also published at Washington University School of Medicine. If these findings hold true for people, it would suggest this was a test that was done on mice and they're, they're trying to explore whether this will be true on people. If these findings are, hold true for people, it would suggest that the combination 
of a tryptophan-rich diet and probiotics may foster a more tolerant, less inflammatory gut environment, which could mean relief for the millions of Americans living with abdominal pain and diarrhea associated with inflammatory bowel disease. And that's from the August 3rd journal, uh, August 3rd edition of the journal Science. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let us go to Alabama and welcome the underwear guy. What's up, underwear guy? Long time no hey. talk to you. How you doing, John? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hey, taking Hey, give out your call. website real quick before you get into your question. Uh, it's www.theunderwearguy.com. All right, Don't underwear the guy. Sea. Yeah, there's lots of underwear guys out there. I didn't know that. And thank you for that uh, half-naked picture you sent me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, people wonder, what's up with this? I, nothing. I just work out my underwear. There you go. Looking good there, underwear guy. Uh, no, no spandex. No, uh, you know, You're something clean, good. boxer shorts. Listen, Ben, thank you yes, so sir. much. Yes, sir. Thank you for what you do. You I know, appreciate we need that. A, we need education out here. I you know, appreciate it's great that. To get involved in this kind of a business, but when people get involved in this kind of a business, where do you get the education? It's You've got true. to go to people like you and the it's doc, true. and you know, it's and true. find these people. It's true. And, so, uh, we're, we're, if for folks who are interested in deal uh, in doing a nutrition business or longevity business, the information that we put out on this program and and the doc puts on is absolutely invaluable. Now, it's not just it for people. Not just for if you're sick. It's it's also just for your business, and that's what I want to be. I want to I want to help people build their business. That's why I'm always talking about joining the Brightside Ben team. We want to help you build your business, and the information you know, that you have on this program will do know, that. I'm on your team, somewhere around six levels down. <laughs> okay, no problem. I just thought I'd let you know that. No but problem. Anyway, I just wanted you to know how much I appreciate you, and I wanted to ask you about eggs today. You know, okay, I've been kind of eating raw eggs for a while. People talk about eggs, you know, how you cook them, this, that. But in the truck, cooking anything is kind of inconvenient. So I would rather just do the eggs raw in a smoothie. But I looked up some things on the Internet about eggs in relationship to salmonella. You know, there's pros, there's cons, and I just thought, well, let me ask make, Ben. Make sure your eggs are clean, make sure they're fresh, uh, and salmonella is more than likely not going to be a problem, in my opinion. But the, clean, but, you mean on the outside of the egg? Yeah, yeah. You want them clean and you want them fresh, uh, and that shouldn't be a problem. No cracks in the eggs. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. For most, I've never heard, really heard of it being a problem. Uh, but what I can tell you is raw eggs are absolutely packed with nutritional value that you will lose to the extent you cook your eggs. Hang on, John. We'll finish up when we come back, okay? Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to my friend John, the underwear guy. Hey, John, are you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay so here's the deal. First of all, cooking eggs, you got to be really careful because when you cook eggs, you actually damage the fats. And while cholesterol is not really, you know, I'm not a big believer in this whole cholesterol deal, cooked cholesterol can actually be somewhat of a problem. When you heat cholesterol, it produces a compound called oxycholesterol. And while cholesterol is a very important building substance, oxycholesterol or, or oxidized cholesterol can be problematic. So you want to really not cook your eggs a lot. Poach them, soft boil them, but I like them raw. And then you hear about this whole salmonella thing. Uh, I've eaten raw eggs my whole life, uh, and I've never gotten salmonella. It's, it's really unlikely. I'm not saying it's impossible to occur, but it's unlikely. Keep your eggs cold. Salmonella can't really grow in, if you keep your eggs cold in the refrigerator. Uh, and then also, good bacteria in the gut can protect you against the toxic effects of salmonella. Salmonella is actually a pretty weak bacteria. And uh, it, it has to compete with bacteria, ordinary bacteria that live in our gut. So if we keep our guts healthy and we're doing our probiotics and eating fermented food and you know overall overall health strategies that we talk about on this program all the time, that really min minimize the likelihood of any salmonella issues with your eggs. But what you will get with raw eggs is an unbelievable, maybe the maybe the most important source of nutrition of any food you can get is a raw egg. Uh, in my opinion. Now, you want to make 
sure you're doing your B vitamins with eggs because there are, if you do raw eggs, because there are, uh, there is a substance in raw eggs that can kind of tie up something called biotin, which is a type of B vitamin, and you may have some biotin issues. So make sure you're doing enough of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with your raw eggs, but the protein in there, the fats in there, the zinc and the vitamin A and the vitamin D and the omega-3 fats, I mean, it's just incredibly, incredibly important and valuable, and it is a, maybe nature's best source, along with whey protein, of building amino acids. All right. Oh, and also lactoferrin, which actually kills uh, kills bacteria, is you can find that in eggs too. Actually, I think there's lactoferrin egg. Uh, there's there's a, a version of lactoferrin, ovoferrin, they call it in eggs. Does that help, John? That is perfect. You know, I I've heard many many explanations on eggs and how good this that the other, but don't people usually don't mention raw eggs? And yep. so in my my profession, I just like to throw them into a little vanilla smoothie and go. Yeah. Uh, Isn't it delicious? Pe- people think that when you say raw eggs, they always turn their nose up at the thought of raw eggs, but it has a oh. creamy kind of flavor to it, a nice vanilla taste to it. Oh, it slides down so nice, too. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. deal. Once you get Hi, man. the slime, it's not bad. It's not slime. It's polysaccharides, <laughs> which are immune boosting and very important for the digestive tract. Okay. All right. Got to go, well, underwear thanks. guy. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, thanks for your call. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Take care, man. All right, let's go to uh, Steve in Missouri. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to the Bright Side. Oh, Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. What's up, man? Well, I was I was thinking about your uh, commentary this morning on the uh, the energies of the heart. Uh, yeah, what'd you and, think? Well, I I found it very interesting. Uh, yeah, and, and I never really thought about it that way. You know, obviously, someone like me, I don't in, engage in that uh, that thought very often. I guess. Um, okay. Not your not your field, obviously, but. Do you? Do you uh, I guess this is all about your opinion. Um, do you? Do you think that that is that is um, one of the? Uh, you know, we all. I guess how to put this. You know, animals. We all do. Uh, we have pheromones that send off signals. Do you think that that having that? Uh, you know, you said it's the the electromagnetic field is is being able to be sensed numerous feet from the body. Yeah. Um, do Do you think that is that uh, is part of our? Um, feelings towards you know how we we gain uh an opinion towards another person as we empathy absolutely 100 percent. we're sensing their field and and subliminally and unconsciously perhaps but we're still sensing that field absolutely that field communicates information and what's really cool about that field that we're all emanating several feet off of our bodies is all our fields are interacting with each other so in essence all of humanity is one big field one big heart field and we just can't see it, we can't detect it, but because we know we can't detect the big heart field that covers the earth, but we can detect it coming off of our bodies, that implies that there's this link between human beings that in essence makes all of humanity one entity. Whereas like in, in the Bible it talks about the body of Christ. That's really what that means. It's like all of human beings are one big body and humans are like little cells in this one big body. And this, right. uh, this connection can be, uh, can be quantified, can be measured by this electromagnetic field that emanates off of our hearts. And yes, I absolutely believe this is how we sense each other. And this is how we know when somebody's dangerous or somebody's not dangerous, somebody's safe, somebody's friendly. We're sensing these fields. We're sensing these energies that are coming off of our bodies. And this is an airy fairy, you know. 20 years right. ago, 10 years ago, it would, it would sound like I was just smoking too much pot or something talking about this. But we know now that what people used to think was airy-fairy is really hardcore science. That's what this whole idea of neurocardiology is all about. And I'm going to continue talking about it, too, because I think it's really important and it's really missed. If we're going to be serious about health, we have to understand that there's much more to health than the physical manifestations of our bodies, our emotional natures, our mental natures, our electromagnetic natures. These are all very, very important when it comes to how healthy or not healthy we are. And I think if we don't take advantage or if we don't at least understand these aspects, we're really missing a serious, serious aspect of how uh, or a serious way that we can maintain our health. All right. right. I got to go, Steve. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Take care, buddy. All right. Let's go to Robert in Ohio. Good morning, Robert. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Nice to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Hey, uh, hey, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Desiccate desiccated liver from the 70s. And nice, I don't know if you nice. use that in the 70s, but it's very, I, I think it's very powerful to your I agree body. with you. But I want to talk, I want to talk about uh, diatomaceous earth, or DE. Let me just say one thing. I love, di- I love diatomaceous earth. I've been using it for years. Hang on a second. Let me just say one thing about desiccated liver. You always want your liver to be organic. 
because the liver processes toxins and you don't always know you're getting organic with a desiccated liver. So it's very, very important if you're eating liver, which is a powerful food, uh, one of nature's most powerful foods, uh, you got to make sure it's organic because the liver of animals is processing the antibiotics and the hormones and all the other toxins that animals are subjected to. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. What were you going to say, Robert? Oh, okay. No, that's fine. I just, I just want to know what your feelings are on uh, DE and it's, uh, it's awesome benefit. stuff. It's awesome stuff. Okay. Diametation. Di, die atoms are little organisms, and uh, tiny little organisms, and when they die, they just deposit their shells and their minerals in the earth, and you can actually ingest them as nutritional supplements. I use them in my skincare products for many years. I still I plan on still using DE in my skincare products, but things like diametaceous earth and bentonite clay and, and things that are uh, found in the soils can be extremely valuable sources of nutrition, particularly valuable sources of absorbable minerals. And I'm a big, big fan of DE. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it, Robert. Thanks for your call, too. Oh. I, 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 oh, sorry sorry about that. I hung up on him accidentally. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to Carl the Truth Raider. Good morning, Carl. What's up, buddy? Good morning, Ben. Well, it's 102 here, and, and remember we were talking about a foot of snow in January? Wow. Wait a minute. It's 102 in Oregon? Yeah, 102. Oh, that must feel wonderful. <laughs> yeah. 90% nice humidity? Yeah. Well, oh, my 30 God. or 40%. Nice and cozy in, in Denver, though. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's probably about 75. It's been really nice in Denver, i got to say. Absolutely. Yeah, man, I'm very, very envious. Hey, let's talk today about something that uh, you hear about, and they talk about occasionally on medical shows, about the quality of, of your urine that tells you what's going on with the health of your body. Some urine is dark, some is red, some is yellow, some is clear. And then, but they don't mention this. What causes urine sometimes to be sudsy and soapy-like? What's protein. going on there? That's a sign of protein in the urine, and that's a sign okay. that the kidney's not doing its business. Kidney's supposed to filter all that stuff out. Excuse me. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's, it's, not, like you're, it's, not, like, it's not necessarily a big deal, but it's a sign that there's protein in the urine. That usually means that the kidney is somehow not filtering things out as well as it should. So if it happens consistently, you may want to consider that you're having a kidney issue, which are unfortunately extremely, extremely common. What causes kidney issues? Well, what is, you have to know what the kidney does. The kidney filters the blood. Kidney issues are blood issues, plain and simple. Blood issues typically occur in people who are diabetics, thus the relationship between diabetes and kidney disease. Kidney dis disease, like all health challenges, or like most health challenges, are secondary to the triangle of disease. They follow breakdowns at the digestive system level, the blood sugar level, and cortisol, that is stress hormone, and uh, the thyroid. The triangle of disease underlies all health challenges, including kidney disease. Clean the blood is the answer if you're dealing with any kind of kidney health problems. And your urine can be a measurement or, or can be a way to detect kidney problems for sure. Cloudy urine, uh, uh, um, dark urine, or clear urine, th those, are necessar don't, those are not necessarily big deals. Protein in the urine is not necessarily a big deal, but it can be indicative of kidney problems. All right, Carl, the truth raider, yes, gotta sir. say goodbye. That's all the time we're, we have for okay. today. Thanks, Thank thanks you, for the call, Carl. Appreciate it. All right, we gotta go. Hope you enjoyed it today. We'll continue talking about uh, heart health on Monday. On the bright side, please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. They're all at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.